This video shows you how to use Google Maps to estimate average grade and distance for off-road trails and hiking trails. I am going to use this calculator to take the measurements we make in Google Maps and convert them to average grade, which is, in other words, the slope of the trail. Grade is defined as the rise over the run, where rise refers to elevation gain, and run is the projected distance on a map. They're the two legs of this right triangle. I'll enter the highest elevation, the lowest elevation, for, to calculate the rise, and the projected distance in miles to calculate the run in feet. The calculator will do the rest of the work to calculate the average percent grade and actual distance, which is this distance from the top of the triangle to the bottom corner. This is an Excel-based calculator, and there's a download link in the notes of the video. For our example, we're going to measure the distance and elevation change for a U.S. Forest Service trail in the Crazy Mountains near Bozeman, Montana. We're going to start at the Half Moon Campground and end up in this area, which is called uh, Twin Lakes. Zoom in just to confirm that. Yeah, Twin Lakes. In the map view of Google Maps, I use the scroll wheel on my mouse to increase magnification, but you can also use the plus minus buttons in the lower right hand corner of the screen. First, I zoom in on the start of the U.S. Forest Service Trail, number 119, which begins at the Half Moon Campground near Big Timber Peak. As I zoom in, the trail appears as a hash line. We could just measure the length of the hash line, but as you'll see, the line may not be an accurate depiction of the trail. To get a more accurate view, I'm going to use the satellite view to find and measure the length of the trail. To do that, I'm going to click on the satellite button here, which gives us the satellite view of the area, or go to the hamburger icon up here and select satellite view. The view shows the trail as seen from space at a pretty good resolution. The first thing you notice is that the trail is not lined up with the hash line generated by Google. According to Google Maps, the Forest Service Trail starts at this green teardrop icon and, where, and goes through the forest this way, when in fact, if you look carefully, it's several hundred feet away up here at this bend in Big Timber Canyon Road. To measure map projected distance, right-click on your mouse and select Measure Distance from the menu. A bullet mark shows up. Drag it to the start of the trail. Right there. Then click on every bend of the trail you can see. So now the trick is to find the trail as it goes through the forest and click periodically where you see it. You can put as little spacing between the bullets as you want. As a rule, I try to keep bullet spacing such that each bend in the trail has three bullets. So I'll show that after we get to a clearing here. There appears to be a bend at the trail. So there's one, two, three. When you run out of map, Hold the left mouse button down and drag the map so you can see more trail and continue to add the measurement points. You can also magnify or zoom in and adjust your trail when you think you've lost track of your tra lost track of the trail. Here it is. Looks like it comes out through the forest this way, you can adjust the trail. So you can see, because the satellite in this case didn't take pictures from directly overhead, the timber line starts to hide parts of the trail. If you have first hand knowledge of the trail, then click where you know the trail to be. If you don't, you can do one of two things. Either add a bullet at the next place you see a section of trail, or follow another visual cue, like this tree line, to estimate the location of the trail.
It's going to take me a few minutes to place all the bullets, so please feel free to advance the video to the next section where we enter the distance into the calculator. Here's a great example of a section of the trail that you can't see, but the timber line gives away where the trail most likely, um, the direction the trail most likely takes. So we're just going to follow that tree line. Sure enough, the trail reappears on the other side of the trees. Here's another example where you can see the tracks for the trail coming out of these trees up above, but you can't really make out where the trees, where the trail goes from the end of the bridge up to those tracks, other than there appears to be a bend, bend down here. So we'll um, make an assessment that uh, I'm just going to make the guess really that that's part of the trail and we'll take it from there. Again, you can see that by zooming in where those tracks are, give the best indication of the trail and not, in fact, the, what Google is pointing to with their hash line. It looks like it's going up here. So you see trails, you see a trail coming through the forest like that. And we're actually looking at the end of the trail as we're right up at Twin Lakes. So we'll take a path around to the back. It looks like there's a, some remnants of a trail or at least creek runoff. Looks kind of like a trail up there, actually. Do this. And then we'll just end up right there at the uh, at the top of at the top of uh, Twin Lakes. So our total distance is 3.61 miles, which we'll enter into the calculator as the run calculation. That amounts to 19,061 feet. Now we'll use the same map to measure elevation gain. For this step, you change Google Maps to show elevation lines. Click on the hamburger icon up here in the menu to access Terrain View. And then that changes the satellite view to something that looks more like the map view. But with terrain view, you can zoom out or in to see elevation lines. So at our magnification, the magnification where we started, there were no elevation lines. But as I zoom out, they appear. 
and if I zoom out too far, they disappear and it just you get sort of a um, gradient um, defined by color. So we'll zoom in to a level where we can see what the elevation lines read. Since we already have to have the start and end point showing, let's go to the end point, which is at the higher elevation. To get a more conservative, meaning steeper, estimate of average grade, choose the elevation line that is higher than the end point if the end point isn't on an elevation line itself. So this range, at least uh, for this for this end point, we'll have to zoom out again to get that elevation line. It looks like the next highest elevation is 8,000 feet. So I enter that amount into the calculator. Now let's go to the start elevation. To get a more conservative estimate of the average grade, I'm going to choose, and here's our starting point, I'm going to choose the elevation line below the starting point if it's not on the line itself. And as you can see, it's not on the line itself. If for this range, the dark lines represent, uh, or rather, are labeled for every 200 feet above sea level. The lighter lines represent increments of 40 feet in elevation. So to get a more conservative estimate of average grade, I'm going to choose the elevation line below the starting point if it's not on the line itself. In this case, I'll choose something between 6,400 uh, 6, feet and 6,600 feet. And since each line represents, each of these lighter lines represents 40 feet, this is lower than that line, so I'm going to choose 6440 as my starting elevation. I enter that amount into the calculator, and that generates the average grade, and it calculates a distance which is the actual trail length based on what we measure and based on where I place those bullets. Because the average grade is less than 20%, the difference between the distance we measured and the actual length of the trail is kind of insignificant. Thank you for watching.